Anytime I make a gulp video, I always get comments from people asking for a browser sync tutorial. If you've been one of those people, well, today's your lucky day because in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up browser sync in your gulp workflow. And if you're not one of those people and you haven't used browser sync before, well, here's what it's all about. Browser sync is a powerful tool that makes it easy to test your website while you're building it. It works by spinning up a local server and syncing it up to your browser. Then anytime you make changes in your code editor, it'll reload the browser automatically to update it in real time. You won't have to keep manually reloading every 10 seconds anymore, cause we're all about efficiency over here and those seconds are precious. All right, now to start off, we want to make sure that we have Node and NPM installed on our computer. So I have the project files open in my code editor, VS Code. And if we go down to the terminal window, we can check if we have Node installed by typing in Node-V. And if you do have it installed, it'll return a number, a version number. And we can do the same thing for NPM, NPM-V. And we do have NPM installed. Now, if you don't have Node and NPM installed yet, you can go to the nodejs.org website and download and install the installer onto your computer. All right, once you have Node and NPM installed in your computer, the next thing we're gonna do since we're working with Gulp in this tutorial is install the Gulp CLI or command line interface. And we can do that from our command line again by typing npm install gulp dash CLI. And we'll add the dash G to install it globally on our computer. This is going to enable us to use the gulp command from the command line in any directory on our computer. So we'll install that. And the other thing we want to do is for the gulp CLI, it is actually kind of a two part system with gulp. You install the gulp CLI globally on your computer so you can use the gulp command on the command line. But in each project, you do need to install gulp again, just in that local project to run the gulp file and things like that. So it's kind of a two part process for Gulp. Now, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can go to the Gulp browser sync repository that I have. It's linked down in the description below and you can get all the actual complete files that we'll be using in this project. Now let's start configuring our project. So we're going to be installing some packages for our Gulp and browser sync workflow. So to create a package JSON file, we'll type in npm init and dash y to just answer yes to all the default questions. So we have a package JSON file. And then we're going to start installing our packages. So we can type in npm install and the packages that we want to install are gulp since we're using gulp, obviously. Then we're also going to use gulp sass to compile our sass files to CSS. Then we're also going to use gulp post CSS because we're installing um, CSS nano, which is a post CSS plugin. So you have to install post CSS and then also the plugin itself, CSS Nano. Then we're installing Gulp Terser and that's going to minify our JavaScript files. And of course we want to install browser dash sync. So let's install all those packages. Okay. So now we've installed our packages. It's also created a package lock JSON file, and that's going to save the actual versions that are installed on our project. The next thing we want to do is want to create a new file. This is going to be our gulp file.js. This is where we're going to add all of our gulp configuration. So in our gulp file, the first thing we want to do is import all the modules that we have from the packages that we installed, and we're going to import them as JavaScript constants. So first one is gulp. We're going to import some of the gulp functions that we'll be using later on in our gulp file. So those ones are source, dest, watch, and series. And it's going to come from the require gulp. Then we're going to add sass. That's going to be the gulp sass package. Post CSS, which will come from the gulp post CSS package. CSS nano from the CSS nano package. And same thing with terser. Terser. And then of course, browser sync. And this is a little different. It's importing the package, the, the uh, browser sync package, 
but we're also going to run the create function. And this is going to kind of initialize the browser sync server that we're going to be using. All right, now that we have our packages installed, we're going to create our gulp tasks. And in gulp4, the gulp tasks are functions. So the first one we want to create is our SAS task. So we'll create a function. I'm going to call it SCSS task. And then in the function, it's going to return um, a node stream using the source function from gulp. And then we're going to read from the app .scss style .scss file. So that's the source file that we're going to get our SAS styles from. And we also want to turn on source maps. So we'll set source maps to true. This is something that's kind of built in now with Gulp, which is nice. We don't have to install a separate package anymore. Then we're going to pipe on um, the SAS function itself. And then once we have our SAS compiled, we're going to minify it. So we're going to use that post CSS plugin that we installed. So post CSS. And then in the um, parameters, we're going to run CSS nano. There we go. And lastly, with our minified CSS file, we're going to save it using the dest function. And we want to save it in a new folder. So we're going to call this dist. And we're also going to save our source maps there. So source maps and this sort of dot will tell Gulp to save it in the same location. So in the dist folder. Okay, so next up after SAS is our JavaScript task. So in the same way, we're going to create a new function, JS task. And it's also going to return a node stream using source. And this is coming from where our script file is. So app JS script.js. And again, we're turning on source maps. So for JavaScript, the only thing we're doing is minifying our JavaScript file. We're not doing anything too fancy with that. So we're running Terser, and then we're going to save it um, using the dest function again in our dist folder. And again, saving our source maps in the same location. So the next thing we want to do is create our browser sync functions. And we are going to create two. So browser sync tasks. The first one is browser sync serve. This is going to initialize a local server and just sort of start running it. So we're going to create a new function, browser sync serve, if I can type. And we do need to use a callback function as the parameter because um, the browser sync function is not a gulp plugin like some of the other plugins that we've used. So we're not returning anything. Um, so in order to tell the asynchronous function that it is complete, we need to manually um, explicitly end it by using that callback function. So in this function, I'm going to say browser sync init. This starts up the server. And we need to also tell it where the server is going to be based out of. So using the server option, we're setting base dir to, oops, dot, <laughs> to be the the root directory that we're running the gulp file from, which is our project root. And that's where we want our server to be based off of because that's where the index.html file is located. So that's our browser sync function. And then at the end, we'll run our callback function to again signify that it is complete. Now, the other thing we want to do with browser sync is not only initialize a server, but we also want to reload the server whenever we make code changes. So we need to create a new function for that. We're going to call this browser sync reload. And again, with a callback. And this one is pretty simple. It's just running browser sync reload. And then the callback. OK, so now that we have our browser sync tasks all set up, as well as our SAS and JavaScript tasks, let's add it into our gulp workflow. So we're going to create our default gulp task by exporting default. And in our default task, we're going to use series to run a bunch of things one after the other. So we're going to just list all the tasks that we just created. SCSS task, JavaScript task. And then we want to start the browser sync server. So browser sync 
serve, I believe it was called. And then we also need to create our watch task. So we're just going to add that here for now. This is going to be our default gulp task. This is what's going to run when you type gulp in on the command line from the very beginning. Now let's create our watch task. Um, let's create a task here. Actually, let's create it above our default gulp task. So watch task, and this is a gulp thing. So it's going to watch. Now let's think about this. So we want to watch our, our file. So we have index.html and then we have SAS and JavaScript files. If I make a change to my index.html file, I don't necessarily want to rerun my SAS and JavaScript tasks. All I want to do really is to reload the website because I've made some changes in the markup. So we're going to create two different watch um, functions in this task. So the first one is going to be watching any HTML files. Of course, we only have that one file, but we'll just add a wildcard there just for the heck of it. And if it detects, if the watch function detects any changes in the HTML files, we want to run the reload uh, browser sync reload function that we just created. So browser sync reload. And that's it for when we make changes in HTML. Now, if we make any changes in our SAS or JavaScript files, we want to run our SAS and JavaScript tasks and then also run the reload function. So we'll add another one here. This is going to watch, um, so we're going to watch two sets of files. First is going to be app scss um, style.scss. And if you have um, more subfolders in your SAS folder, what you can actually do is scss um, and then add the double asterisk wildcard scss files. So after that, we also want to watch our JavaScript files. So app, and then we can do the same thing, js uh, wildcard, or that's a glob rather. So that can mean that if you have any subfolders in the JavaScript folder or no folders at all, which, which, which is what we have since we only have that one um, JavaScript file, and then wildcard JS. So the first parameter in the watch function is the files that we're watching. Then there's another parameter and that's going to be what we're going to run when um, any changes are detected. So since we want to run our SAS and JavaScript tasks, we're going to use a series thing again, SCSS task, JS task, and then we're going to run browser sync reload. Now we have all of our tasks. We have our SAS task, JavaScript task, our two browser sync tasks to both start and reload our browser sync server. And we have our watch task that's going to watch our files and run browser sync reload anytime changes are detected. I think everything is done in our gulp in our gulp file, so let's test it out. So we'll type in gulp. All right. So we can see here, if you saw in that upper right hand corner, it said browser sync connected, which is great. And we can see our little simple website right here. So if we turn on our dev tools, we we'll just want to check that uh, our JavaScript stuff is running, which it looks like it is, which is good. So now let's make sure that browser sync is working. So going back into our code editor, let's just make an HTML change. So I'm just going to type in for the headline, add a bunch of Z's, save it. And you can see down in our terminal, it's reloading our browser sync. And if we go back to the website, we can see that it has indeed changed. Okay, awesome. So we'll just kind of delete that. Let's now make a change in our SAS file. So I think I'm going to just change that blue background color that we have going to something else. So this is in the box element. So let's just kind of choose a random, random color here. Let's try green, save it. You can see down in the terminal, it is uh, running stuff and reloading. And in the website, it has been changed. So we'll just kind of undo that change and save it again. And now we're back to normal. And that's it for setting up browser sync in your Gulp workflow. If you want to learn more about Gulp, check out my Gulp for Beginners course linked down in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on coding.